everyone to the Central Church Podcast. My name is Brooke, and here with me today, I have Erica Wilson and Kara Cox. Um, and before we get going too far into this podcast, I'd love for you guys just to introduce yourselves a little bit more. So Erica, tell us a little bit about you. Hi. Um, well, I am originally from Maine. I moved away during my college years, but found myself uh, back in Maine again. And um, at that time, I was really looking at a place in my life where I needed a little something um, more. I was here with family and friends, um, but I really found a great family within Central Church. Um, and so that has become a very large part of me and who I am in, in my life. Um, I have a cute little dog named Maya, um, and I work in the healthcare industry. And I love talking and I love people. So I'm very happy to be on the podcast. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. And what about you, Kara? Yeah, um, I also was born in Maine and I have been here pretty much my entire life. Um, I live right here in Augusta. I am married to my husband, Brandon, of 10 years. And I have um, three girls that are uh, almost four, 16, and almost 19. Um, and uh, I've been on staff here at the church for going on five years now. And we've been a part of Central, um, or what used to be KCC, for the last um, about six years. Well, awesome. Um, thank you both genuinely for just uh, taking time out of your schedules just to be on the podcast. And um, we're really looking forward to hearing from your, both of your perspectives. And so with that being said, um, today we just want to talk about um, the world <laughs> right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, hate, there's a lot of violence and hurting um, in all different ways for all different reasons. Um, but we just want to talk a little bit about um, what it means to love your neighbor <laughs> today. And, you know, I think we're hearing that phrase get thrown around a lot right now. Um, especially within the Christian community. Um, but we want to just talk a little bit today about what it actually means to love your neighbor and who our neighbors are. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion a lot of the times about what that means and how we do it really well. And so we just want to spend just a little bit of time. You can talk about this for, for much longer than what we're going to talk about it. But um, so yeah, that's what we want to focus on today. And um, I'm really excited, um, personally, to just be talking about this topic. Um, so, in Luke 10, um, an expert of the law asked Jesus how to have eternal life. And to this, Jesus confirmed the need um, to keep the greatest commandment, which is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. But, you know, first it's important to, find, to define who our neighbor is. Um, and, that, and Jesus was asked the same question by this expert of the law, and he responded with the story of the Good Samaritan. Um, and a lot of us are familiar with this story. Um, it's a parable, and a parable is just um, a teaching tool that Jesus, the best teacher we've ever had, uses on a regular basis just to kind of break it down for us because I don't know about you guys, but I need it broken down <laughs> a lot so that we can understand what to do. Um, and we find this story in Luke 10, 25 uh, through 37. So I'm just going to read that for us right now. Um, so he says, but he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and this is talking about the expert of the law, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. 
Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. And he said, look after him, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have had. Which, which of these three, Jesus says, do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. So in this story, um, Jesus kind of creates this model for us of, of how to be a neighbor. And he kind of um, uses an example of a Samaritan, which um, to who he was talking to, a Jewish man of the law, he would have been completely surprised by this because the Samaritans and the Jews did not get along and the Jews did not think favorably of the Samaritans by and large. And so Jesus um, purposefully used this example. And after sharing the story, Jesus says the Samaritan, the one who had mercy, was the neighbor and for us to go and do the same. So Kara, from this, who do you think Jesus is telling us is our neighbor? So I think that um, in this story, we see that it's actually less about um, who is our neighbor and more um, internally, more about who we are and what our willingness is to be the neighbor um, and to be that neighbor to anybody that we come in contact with. Um, we're going to be, or are we going to ask that question of, are we going to be like the Samaritan who gives help um, whenever help is needed? Or are we going to get caught up in questions um, like, well, who are we supposed to help and when are we supposed to help them and, and where and how are we going to help them? Um, and, and is it going to interfere with what my current plans are? Um, our identity is what grounds um, the way that we think about our neighbors and think about who our neighbors are. And um, it's our willingness to, to just be that neighbor. Instead of looking at, you know, are, is this person my neighbor? Is this person my neighbor? It's looking at who we are and are we being that neighbor? Um, Philippians 2 verses 3 and 4 says, um, to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above ourselves, not, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. And I think that um, we see there that our interests, um, our plans, we've got to be willing to set those aside when it comes to um, the needs of others, and that there should be no question that when a need arises that we jump on it, no matter how bad it might mess up our plans or how we might feel about it. Yeah, um, well said. I loved what you said. It's, it's less about who is our neighbor and more of our just willingness to be a neighbor. Um, and that humility piece is so important. Um, you know, the, the Samaritan could have kept going like the others did, the, the ones that it made more sense for them to help. Uh, but he, you know, made it not about him, and he certainly didn't take the easy, <laughs> easy route. You know, he spent his yeah. money and he took his time, and we are to do the same. And that's kind of hard, though. And I think our natural human instinct is um, to make it about us. And like what you were saying, Jesus shows us that it's actually the complete opposite. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, to take that selfish aspect completely out of it and to check your heart, like what you were saying. Um, so thank you. That's a, a crucial foundation to lie there. Um, but where does this neighborly love come from? You know, I think we're all agreeing that, you know, it's not our natural instinct <laughs> right. sure, to have this, you know, loving mercy. Um, so before we discuss how to show love and mercy to those around us, our neighbors, like the Samaritan did, we have to understand first how we access this ability to love in this way. Um, so Erica, how do we access this? How do we have help to do what we can do on our own? Um, well, there's, there's one person I know to turn to. Uh, God, I think for me, I, it, it's an intentional daily thing that I think we all need to put in front of us in terms of uh, asking God to 
to help us tap into that love as he so loves us and to think that we have someone who loved us so much that sacrificed so much for us to be able to live i think that that is an overwhelming source an example of love and really leaning into that um for me getting into the word on a daily basis accessing those those are our our opportunities that we can seek out um, to, to find the sources of that of that love and we can there's a variety of ways like I'm sure we're going to talk about that we can um, not only access that love but access and use it at the same time um, I know it's serving and loving others is a is a bi-directional thing in, in my mind um, where we can serve and love others from that source of love and in turn it refuels uh the love that that god has given us so yeah definitely um i like what you said about um you know like like reading your bible to access it and that sounds so cliche but yeah (laughs) it's true you know like you have to if you're talking about um you know knowing god you have to know him and you do that by, you know, being in his word. And I, I know for you guys, you would agree that um, the more you understand who God is, the more you understand the love that he has for us, you know. Um, and that's going to seep out into everything else that like bi-directional love that you're talking about, you know, yeah. we get it and then we can give it away and it has to go both ways um, for sure. And, you know, I think to learn how to show, I think in order to learn how to show this love to our neighbors, we, we have to look at this perfect example of Jesus. You know, we, we understand that God gives us this love. And I think we can like sort of wrap our heads around that a little bit, you know, like he's very loving and that's great. But, but now it's like, okay, now we have to do it. (laughs) And it gets a little harder. Um, But Jesus modeled um, how to do that here on earth, you know, Um, and I think we have to um, look at how he loved while he was here on this earth, you know, he gave us this perfect demonstration um, to like live out of this love, because that's really what motivated him to do everything he did. Um, So Kara, can you just kind of speak into this example Jesus set um, in showing us how to love our neighbors here on earth. Yeah, for sure. Um, Like you said, Jesus, he's the perfect example to see what this should look like and what we should be um, striving for every time. Um, You know, we, we are, we're called to love our community. And as you said um, in the verse earlier, our very first commandment is to love. And it's to love the Lord your God with all your heart. And when we do that, when we do love our, our Lord with all of our heart, our hearts are changed. We look different. Um, our lives look different. And our hearts look um, different. And this is the love that we're called to pour out onto our neighbors also. Um, and, and yeah, Jesus is he's that perfect example. All throughout the Gospels, um, we see examples of his compassion Um, of his willingness to respond um, to anybody that was in need, no matter, um, you know, where they were at or who they were. Um, We see examples of of respect to people. We see examples of patience. Um, Jesus listened and he encouraged others all the time towards love. um, And that's what we're called to do also. Yeah. um, I... I think that is really good and uh, just I think it's so important to understand like it's not just like you said um, he like he lived out of this love Um, and so it's not just when you see someone on the side of the road like oh okay now I should love people Um, but everything you do everything you are like you said you know your your life should look different Um, you your life should be different because you have the love of God and because of that you can love other people um, all the time Um, and I loved what you said about just like respect too um, and patience and you know you know how many examples do we have of of people coming up to Jesus you know he was already doing a million different things and 
he really didn't have time to, to, you know, talk to them or heal them. But you see this, you know, this patient Jesus, and he stops what he's doing, and he looks at them, and he looks at them in the eye and talks to them with respect, even when they're, you know, the undesirables, like most of them were. Um, and he shows them patience and love and respect and generosity. Um, and, you know, we can demonstrate that too, you know. I, I know both of you have a lot going on. Um, and, you know, an example of this is to stop what we're doing and, you know, to love our community. And even when it's, you know, not convenient for us or we have a lot of stuff going on, you have a kid that, you know, needs you 24-7 or you have different plans <laughs> and if you do it, you know, and I know for you, Kara, that is a large part of, of who you are and what you do and, you know, you get to just, you know, love our community and I love your heart for that um, and I think that demonstrates that so beautifully. Um, no, but another aspect of loving our neighbor that Jesus modeled, which I think is very applicable to right now, probably applicable all the time, <laughs> not probably it is applicable all the time, um, is not waiting to be loved, to love. Um, you know, we see the example of the Samaritan. <laughs> Obviously, the person who was robbed and beaten didn't show his gratitude <laughs> right away. And he didn't say, I love you, please help me. Um, in fact, it probably would have been the opposite. You know, the Samaritan probably wouldn't have even wanted to talk to him. And so this, this Samaritan man um, knew that he wasn't going to get loved um, first or at all, um, but he did it anyway. And, you know, that's a lot of... Um, pretty much the whole story of the gospel, you know. Um, but Erica, could you just speak into this a little bit more of this not waiting um, to be loved, to love the world around us first? Yeah, I mean, the biggest example that I can think of is that, well, didn't wait for us to come around to die for us. Um, there's no there's no benefit in the necessary in waiting. Um, and there's always that opportunity, just as Jesus was constantly presented with opportunity, there's always opportunity for, for us to love. We shouldn't need someone to necessarily be blatantly in need in order to share that love. Um, and I think, again, I'm just gonna go back to that example of Christ did not wait for us to die for us. Um, there's no bigger statement uh, to me than that. <laughs> so, um, but I, I just think it's something that, you know, sometimes people might not be the most lovable, uh, but we're still called to love them anyways. And I think that's really uh, where we have the opportunity to act like Christ in that way, um, to live a Christ-led life, is to take, take those opportunities and not necessarily wait for someone to be as desperate as, as in the parable necessarily, like literally left for dead, but we have an, an awesome opportunity to mimic that same love that Christ has for us uh, by being proactive in our love for others. Yeah, for sure. Um, I liked the word choice you used, opportunity, because um, it is one. It is an opportunity for us to show the love of Christ, um, to take something that you know, the world would see as uh, they should be reactionary to and, you know, take the hate or take um, the bad <laughs> that we're mm -hmm. being presented with um, and flip it on its head in love instead is, like you said, there's no better example than what Jesus did for us. You know, he took the bad, mm -hmm. the sin that we have, and he said, mm -hmm. okay, you don't accept me yet, but I'm going to go ahead and make the biggest sacrifice I could for you because I love you. Um, and we're never going to live up to that standard, obviously, but we can, in the small steps we, we take, um, show even just a glimpse of that kind of love um, to our neighbors, everyone. <laughs> um, but it's difficult. It, it's hard because we're human. Um, but 
Erica, do you just want to speak into the difficulty of this, maybe personally or just in general? Yeah, I mean, it's we're in really challenging times, specifically just right now. Um, but I think that in general, there is truly, I keep using that word opportunity, but this is, if there ever was a time, <laughs> this would be the time um, for us to really kind of check our, our, like our humanness at the door um, and really rely on what we know as the, the heart of God. It is, I know my personally, my human side takes over all the time and I have the need to be right and the need to be this or that. And um, it's just, it takes that split second of me saying, stop. And if I feel like I can't move forward without those things with me, that's when I turn to scripture specifically uh, to help kind of guide me through that out of my humanness, a little closer to God um, and pushing forward. These, these are going to be hard times with the things that are going on in this world and the sin that is so extremely everywhere. <laughs> uh, we have something that's greater than that. Uh, we have, we have access to something that's greater than that. And as much as we see things on TV and on the news, um, we have the ability to, to share the goodness that we know is true to us um, as Christians. And that's kind of what I have personally been clinging on to. It's been a time where many people might ask me to speak out on certain things um, or not. And um, I have to really, before I open my lips and say what my mind wants to say, I have to check in with God and see what my heart needs to say. Mm. Um, that's kind of where I've pulled my, my love from. So I've actually seen this time as a greater opportunity for me personally to grow in my faith and grow in, in learning to love other people better because I think that's something that I'm always going to have to work on um you know we'd like to say oh I'm, I'm pretty decent at it you know I'm nice to people I let the person go in front of me in the grocery store and things like that but um it's a compound effect really if you think about it and those things need to happen on a consistent basis essentially and so that's what I've been kind of using this this time of crazy and kind of staying off of social media for the most part and really checking in with the only form of uh, print media that I need, <laughs> which is a Bible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well said. Um, you know, I think we're here from all of us, we're hearing opportunity come up time and time again. And um, I think that this is no surprise to God what is going on right now. And um, he's given it to us for a reason. And, um, though he's not causing it, you know, we have a choice to make. We can choose to do what the world is doing, um, or we can do what we are talking about, and that's to be more like Jesus. And um, I love what you said, Erica, about like, before you open your mouth, or goodness knows, before you type something on social media, you know, to, to check it, to check your heart where it's at, and what your motivation for doing that is. And um, I think if we actually asked ourselves, like, is this done out of love? The answer would probably be no, <laughs> mm. and we should probably not do it. And um, I think that it's just so important for us who who call ourselves followers of of Jesus to present the gospel, and the gospel is really a story of love. And mm. um, you know, I, I think it might even sound a little bit. Uh, cliche or some might even say childish to be talking about love so much but but really that's the best answer we have for all of this um, and the only thing that is in such firm contrast to the hate and hurting of this world right now um, and so that's why we want to talk about love for 30 minutes <laughs> and you know, how to love our neighbors and and our neighbors are not just the people across the street or the people that look like you or the people that act like you. Um, it's really everyone. And we're not going to wait for them to love us back um, because that's not what Jesus did. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just really appreciate you guys um, sharing your hearts. And, you know, obviously for the words that you have spoken today, but 
but more so just for your personal examples of of loving people well and um, loving our community. And so thank you guys so much for just sharing a little bit today. Um, we hope that people listening um, would also just be encouraged and um, that we can just spur each other on um, to love and good deeds. And um, so before we share our final farewells though, I'd love to just pray for us first. So let's pray together wherever you are. Um, Father, we just, um, we thank you. We thank you that we get to talk about your love and the love that your son showed us, um, that he still shows us. And um, I just pray over the world right now, all of the hurting, God, I pray that we would view this time as an opportunity, an opportunity to behave in a different way than what the world is behaving, um, to love when others are hating, um, to be your example um, to every neighbor we come into contact with. Um, I pray that we would have mercy, that we would check our hearts um, and constantly be learning more about you so we can understand how to better be like you. And um, we just thank you so much. In your name I pray, amen. 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 Um, well, thank you ladies again for joining us and thank you everyone for listening and we hope you tune in for another episode next week.